Hi, this is Miss Narka again. So let's level up with our concept on thermal chemistry. So in this video, we're now getting, we're, we're now going to analyze real potential energy diagrams as seen on your screen. This is an example of a potential energy diagram. So let's look at closely the labels of the diagram and let's look at first the basic of a diagram. So we know as you see in the diagram, you have the Y axis and the X axis. So remember this diagram is a visual representation of what's taking place of the energy during a process of a chemical reaction. This diagram, if you see the 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 one in the middle you see that it is this is divided into half so the half to the left of that represents your reactants and the other half which is on the right side will represent the formation of your products so if you look at closely your x axis your x axis is the reaction coordinate or the progress of the reaction as time goes on so basically this is the time of the progress of the reaction so which we don't quantify that much as long as we know that this is the start all the way to the end while on the y-axis you will see the potential energy which is usually measured in joules or for bigger quantities you will see kilojoules on the y-axis so the potential energy of course it starts with um, a certain number here then as it goes up the value increases until you reach a certain maximum there which we call your activated uh, or your transition state or your activated complex so that's the maximum there so now let us conceptually label the diagram as they are numbered so that we will understand what those curves mean and what do those lines mean so let's begin by looking at our number one so if you look at label number one the line goes from the the uh, x-axis going to a certain line here and the line here if you look at this line here this is the start of your this is actually the progress if you follow through it that's the progress of the entire chemical reaction process so we're in this line is the beginning of the reactants and then this is like the moving up of our boulder until it reaches the minimum amount of energy so this is the beginning of your reactants trying to have the proper collision and interaction so what does the value from this line going to the starting point of the chemical reaction mean so this number one actually represents the potential energy of the reactants. So that represents the potential energy of our reactants. So we can just simply use the symbol, the delta H of the reactant or the reactants if there are many of them so the potential energy of the reactants because this is going to where it starts it's actually the initial content the initial amount of the, of the reactants energy so that they'll be able to proceed and progress through the chemical reaction so that is number one let's look at number two so number two starts on this line the start of the reaction all the way to the top the top of the curve the topmost of the curve and we know that the topmost of the curve is the minimum amount of energy that needs to be overcome to get to the other side so we call this the activation energy or the delta h of the forward reaction so because this is all the way to the tip we call that the activation energy because it is going to the activated complex or the transition state so the activation energy is represented by e sub a so you can shortcut it like that so the activation energy or simply say the delta h of the forward reaction so forward reaction it means that you really start from here all the way to the end that's forward reaction you begin from your left to the right so this is the amount 
of energy that you need to overcome so that the reaction will really form the products that you desired of the reaction. So this is your EA or delta H. That's number two. Now let's look at number three. Number three is here. Number three is really from the x-axis all the way to the maximum of the of the curve. So what's the difference between the two and the three? The three is actually your potential energy of the activated complex. So that's the potential energy of the activated complex. Or again, the activated complex is actually your transition state. So that's really the maximum amount of potential energy for the activated complex value of your system. Now let's look at number four. Number four is if you look at this line here, this line is actually the ending. This is where the formation of your stable products are. So number four is the products all the way to the top to your activated complex area. So how do we call number four? Number four is actually the activation energy. It's your activation energy. The same with number two. EA, it's still activation energy or delta H. However, we call it the delta H of the reverse reaction this time. So what do you mean by reverse reaction? Reverse reaction is when you switch. We said before that the start is here. So this is your reactants going to the products. If we're going to reverse the reaction, you start from the right going to the left. So these are your reactants here going to the products. So this is still activation energy, but this is the activation energy if you try to reverse the reaction. It means that you're going to form, you're going to use your products to form back your reactants. So please do not get confused that the two and the four, they're both representing activation energy, but the two is for the forward reaction and the four is for the reverse reaction. Next, number five. Number five is, if you look at the arrow, it's from where you started to where it ends. So this is like the initial state of your system to the final state. So the initial state were the reactants, the final state are your products. So it's like the difference. Number five is the difference of your products and your reactants. And we call it your change in enthalpy. Or the change in enthalpy is represented, represented by delta H. So this is your change in enthalpy of the reaction, you sh which is the forward reaction in this case, in which we say that the, 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 that the delta H of the reaction is equal to the difference between your final state, the final state is the product, so that's the delta H of the products minus the delta H of your reactants. So the difference of this will tell us if the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Now, if you look at closely our diagram here, our five, if you look at the value of the products, the products is higher compared to the reactants. The reactants is lower. So the products is of higher value compared to the reactants. So products Products minus reactants will give us a positive value here because, again, products is greater than the reactants. And a positive delta H will tell us that this reaction is endothermic. So by looking at the area where 5 is, the difference of the products and the reactants, we would know if it's endothermic or exothermic. And lastly, number 6. Number six is from the x-axis all the way to the products area. So what does this tell us? Because it's going all the way to the products. This is actually your delta H or the potential energy of your products. 
So that's the delta H of your products. Or again, if I put it in words, that's the potential energy of the products. And so this exactly are the answers to how we label the diagram. So I want you, if you don't understand this again, please rewind this video and repeat it to yourself. And if you really cannot understand, please reach out to me in the comment section so I can answer your confusion. And please copy this on your notebook, copy the diagram, do it on your own. And after this, there will be an exercise that will be given to you to practice the concepts of analyzing potential energy diagram. So let me stop there and I hope that this video will make it clear for you what potential energy diagram look like and how to interpret it. Thank you.